Hi, I'm Catherine and I'm the Customer Services Manager for Livingston. Livingston are Europe's largest rental company for test and measurement equipment. Not only do we want to provide you with the latest equipment, but we'd also like to show you how to use the instruments too. Here is a short video showing one of our more popular products. Starting from power up, uh, the first check is to get the pin source and make a measurement. And it's measuring between minus 75 and minus 80, so that's correct. That's done. We can save that measurement in the report. So we've checked that the instrument is working correctly, it's measuring as, as we expect. And then we can add, test the jumper cable that we, we're going to use to connect to the system. Which is torqued tight. We're also measuring the load. And we check the torque on this. This is more difficult. This bit's more difficult to show. Okay, and that's tight. So we make a second measurement. We check that everything is stable. The connections are stable. That's good. We can record that point. And we're now ready to start making measurements for the day. So we're now ready to make a measurement on the system. We've connected in another cable and a load and a PIM source in here just for, for measurement purposes. So if we make the measurement now, we see that we have a, a PIM measurement of, mi of minus 89. So we know that somewhere in this system there is, a, there is a source of PIM. And we can record that into the report and stop the measurement. Now, we can also measure in in a different mode, we can use a time trace which shows us a plot of the, of the PIM against time. So if I make another measurement, you'll see the plot building up. And if I have a loose cable, you can see that the PIM is changing with a loose connection. So that's a useful plot to show you an unstable system. The main other way of, of testing PIM is to use the RTF function. And to do that, we need to add the RTF module. So if we, to select the RTF, we go to mode and select the RTF function. The RTF is fitted with one RF cable and one USB connection. But before we can use it, we need to calibrate. And this is done simply by fitting a PIM source onto the output and then calibrating. It just takes a few seconds. And that's it done. Now, if we display the overlay plot, this is a, a plot of distance against return loss and PIM. If we make a measurement now on the same unit that we've calibrated, we should get a zero measurement. And so here we have at PIM of minus 77.3 at zero meters, which is the PIM measurement of this, as you remember from the first measurement and also return loss of minus 43 at zero. So what that's saying is that at, that at this point we have a PIM source and everything is zero. So we can see that everything is low and we're ready to make a measurement. Okay. So if we now go back to the setup we had originally, this is the same set of cables
I'll make a measurement again. What we can see now is we have a peak of PIM of minus 88 at 3.6 meters. Now that is a PIM source which I added in there. So there's a little bit of inaccuracy in the measurement, uh, it's, it's, but it's giving us uh, 3.6 meters for, the, for that junction there. Also, we see a spike at uh, 23.7 meters, which, which coincides with the end of the load, and the return loss verifies that, because the load is 17 meters long, the actual, this measurement here is the connection at this point on the load and the, the difference between these two is 17 meters which is the length, the cable length in the, in the cable load. And so you can see here that you can differentiate different PIM sources by using the range default module. Okay. And I can do it, but for a test here we, we can add in a second PIM source just before the load and make another measurement. The return loss is measured first, followed by the uh, high power pin measurement. So here now we can see we have a second peak in the pin, and if we use the marker we have minus 90 dBm at 6.6 .6 meters, or minus 89 at 3.4 meters. So with a little bit of inaccuracy there, we, we can see that the PIM sources are at the joints in the cables. We have the third PIM peak, which coincides with the end of the cable in the load. And you notice there is, there is a small, small discrepancy in the measurement, but that's, that's due to the, the short range of frequencies we have to uh, do the sweep with. So, there, there we have, you can see now that you can differentiate different PIM sources within a system. These are only three meters apart, but you can clearly see uh, the difference in position between them. Okay. So after the RTF measurement has located problems and they've been fixed, the final test has to be a standard PIM measurement because this is the only way that you can measure the stability of the system by tapping and twisting. If we make the measurement, it can look good, but then with just a little bit of movement in a cable, you can see this instability there. This is a bad cable. But this, this is a measurement that you can't see with an RTF module. You have to do the standard pin measurement for this. If for normal measurement purposes, uh, the factory default settings uh, are all that's required. With the frequency 1 and frequency 2 at the band edges, which gives you an IM3 at 890 megs. The standard power levels are 43 dBm's per tone. These meet the IEC standards for uh, base station testing. And this, this standard setup is, is what you will normally use for most measurements. The accessory kit contains all the components you need to start making uh, good pin measurements. In the bag you'll find a cleaning kit which is very important, an adjustable spanner which is dual purpose and can be used as a tapping tool as well as the spanner, a torque spanner to make sure that you torque up all your connections correctly, a box with a variety of um, adapters you can add more to these but the box is designed so that the, the, the adapters are protected, uh, the plating and the ends of the connectors uh, doesn't get damaged when stored in the box. Cables um, for connecting into your system, male to male and male to female DIN connectors, and then a low PIM load and a PIM source, which you mustn't get mixed up. The PIM source is only for checking the instrument at the start of the day or for calibrating the, RT the RTF unit. The PIM load is what you will use if you have to break the cables on a system and uh, fit a load for, for measurement purposes. But they work different. They work in different ways and you shouldn't get the two confused. The RTF or range default module 
is an external module which is fitted to the IQA output, uh, to the output port, so and then leaving a test port here. It, it's, con it's fitted using the two supplied cables, one RF cable from the auxiliary port to the monitor port on the IQA, and one USB from the IQA to the micro USB on the RTF unit. It's then automatically um, discovered by the IQA and uh, can then be calibrated ready for use. For pin measurements, connector care and cleanliness is very, very important. Uh, when you connect and disconnect uh, 716 connectors, little pieces of metal can come from, from the threads and get into the RF path of the connector. So we provide a cleaning kit which it consists of simply alcohol wipes and cotton buds. for cleaning the inside of a connector. It's very straightforward. I'll just use the cotton bud to get inside the connector and clean any dirt or metal filings from, from the inside. And if you do this on a regular basis you'll get good measurements. When mating DIN 716 connectors first you locate them and then turn the, the ring. You never rotate the connector itself otherwise you may damage the plating inside which will cause pin problems. Once it's finger tight then you use two spanners always need two spanners to torque up the connection. This will give a stable connection for pin measurement. We hope you found that video useful and informative. If you have any rental test equipment needs, please give us a call and you can speak to one of our technical engineers that will help you with your specific application.